Hello everyone and welcome to Strongman Math Class. We're going to talk about flipping tires. How much does that tire weigh? It weighs a thousand pounds. Every tire weighs a thousand pounds. Thanks Alan Thrall, we're done. Just kidding, that's not actually true. Seriously though, how much weight do you actually have to lift when you flip a tire? We can always just weigh a tire on a scale and whenever there's a tire flip in a competition, the weight is always listed as just the total weight of the tire. But we all understand that when you flip a 600 pound tire, you're not actually lifting 600 pounds. But how much weight are you lifting? Well, that's what we're going to figure out. So how much force does it take to lift one side of this tire off the ground? Well, it turns out this is actually a really simple problem. And in order to solve it, let's take a snapshot of this tire at the instant it breaks off the ground. So for all intents and purposes, the tire is sitting level and it's being supported at exactly two points. Here by the force that's lifting it, and here where the other side touches the ground. We want to know this force, F, which is the force it takes to hold this tire stationary given that it's being supported by whatever force is necessary on the other side, which we'll call N for normal force. So we have these three forces, F, W, T, which is the weight of the tire, and N, which all sum to zero in the y direction, and we can derive this equation, F plus N equals W, T. Now we know W, T, but we have two unknowns, F and N, so under normal circumstances we would need a second equation to solve this, but we have one more piece of information about this special case that makes this problem very simple. We know that the weight of this tire is evenly distributed, or at least close enough for our purposes, and that means the tire's center of gravity is here, directly in the center of the tire. That means that both of these forces are located an equal distance from the tire's CG, with that distance being the tire's radius. Because these forces are equidistant from the tire's CG, we know that they are equal to each other. They're the same force. So we can rewrite this equation as 2F equals WT. And we can see that F is half the weight of the tire, and this will always be the case as long as the tire's weight is evenly distributed, which it will be, because if it wasn't, then the tire wouldn't be very good at being a tire. So the force required to lift one end of a tire off the ground is equal to half the total weight of the tire. That part of this is really simple, but there is a complication. So right now you might be saying, wait a second, I had to flip a 600 pound tire in my last competition, and there was no way I was only lifting 300 pounds. And you're right, the force you had to apply to that 600 pound tire to flip it was more than 300 pounds, and here's why. No one actually lifts a tire by grabbing the bottom of it and lifting up. At least not a big tire like the ones we flip in Strongman, and not if they've been coached correctly on how to do it. That would require you to do some kind of weird squat motion while somehow not letting your knees go forward too much, which is just awkward as hell, not to mention that it turns the lift into a bicep curl as soon as your legs and back have straightened up. And doing a several hundred pound bicep curl is a really bad idea if you like your biceps to not be torn. Just ask Callum Von Moger about that. So since most of us prefer our biceps to stay attached, we don't flip tires that way. The proper technique for flipping a tire looks something like this, and yeah, I'm using Alan Thrall as a source again. If you don't know how to flip a tire and you want a good overview of it, his video explains it really well. But in this picture, Alan's feet are a little bit back from the tire instead of right up on it. He's on his toes, his back is pretty horizontal, his chest is driving into the top of the tire and his arms are straight and spread out about as wide as he can get them. And this is a lot less like a squat and more like a defensive lineman stance in football. And when he goes to actually flip the tire, he's gonna be starting as low as he can and driving his chest up and forward into the tire. And most of the force is gonna be provided through the chest making contact with the tire. So what does this mean for the math? Well, it means that the force applied to this tire by the athlete is not applied directly upwards. It's applied at some angle relative to the horizontal, which means there is a component of this force acting in the vertical direction and a component acting in the horizontal direction. Now we've already established that in order for this end of the tire to break off the ground, the vertical component of this force needs to be half the tire's total weight, but we're not applying a purely vertical force. Because of this angle, in order to achieve a vertical component of half the tire's weight, this total force is going to have to be more than half the tire's weight. If we assume that the tire doesn't slip at all, any horizontal component of this force is going to be perfectly counteracted by friction and essentially gets wasted. So we can see that applying a force perpendicular to the plane of the tire 
would be the most mechanically efficient way to flip it, but our body mechanics don't really allow us to do that with big tires. So we have to exert more force than the amount actually required to lift the tire. So exactly how much more force do we have to exert? Well, that depends on the angle at which we apply the force. If we know the vertical component and the angle at which the force is applied, figuring out what the total force needs to be is pretty simple. The vertical component of F is just F sine theta, and that vertical component needs to be equal to half the weight of the tire, so we get this equation. Solve this for F, and we get this equation, which will tell us exactly how much force we need to apply for a given tire weight and angle. Now, just to generalize this a bit, I'm going to divide this by the tire's weight, and that'll give us a number that I'm going to call the lift factor. The lift factor is the force required divided by the tire's weight. And what that tells us is the fraction of the tire's weight that we need to apply for a given angle. So for example, if the lift factor was 0.75, that would mean we need to apply 75% of the tire's weight at that angle in order to flip it. So for an 800 pound tire, that would be 600 pounds. So here's a graph of the lift factor for some different force angles. We can see all the way over here at 90 degrees, the lift factor is 0.5. That 90 degrees would be a purely vertical force, and for that angle, the force required would be half the weight of the tire, which we already knew. We also know that we can't actually achieve that force angle with our body mechanics, but looking at this graph, we can pretty easily see that the closer we can get to that 90 degrees, the less force we have to apply. Over here at the other end of this curve, we can see that at 30 degrees, the lift factor is 1, meaning that at a 30 degree angle, we would have to apply the full weight of the tire in order to flip it. So you can see here that if we were to look further to the left on this graph and decrease the angle even more, which is to say make the angle closer to purely horizontal, the lift factor is going to end up being greater than 1. And that means if we can't achieve at least a 30 degree force angle, we're going to end up actually lifting more than the full weight of the tire. And I didn't include this on the graph because it would mess up the size of the window and make everything pretty uninteresting to look at, but as this angle gets closer and closer to zero, or closer and closer to horizontal, this force applied is going to go through the roof and approach infinity. And that makes sense because if you're just pushing on this tire horizontally, you're obviously never going to flip it no matter how hard you push. You might be able to slide it if you push hard enough to overcome the friction, but you'll never flip it. So that's the lift factor, but let's just pick a few different tire weights to look at. So. This is pretty much the same as the last graph, only with the y-axis being force applied instead of lift factor. And here at a 30 degree angle, we can see that all of these weights are equal to the weight of the tire. And that makes sense since that's a lift factor of 1, and down here at 90 degrees, all these weights are half the weight of the tire, which also makes sense because that's a lift factor of 0.5. So the moral of the story is, when you're flipping a tire, get as low as you can and drive upwards. Get that angle as close to 90 degrees as you can, and minimize the amount of weight you have to lift. And now I've spent 10 minutes using math to explain something that everyone already knew anyway. You're welcome. So what's the final answer to how much that tire weighs from the athlete's perspective? Well, we can't really know without knowing the exact angle at which you're applying force. But that would be a really hard thing to measure, so we can't really know exactly. However, assuming the force you create is somewhere in this range, somewhere between about 40 degrees and 60 degrees, you're going to be looking at roughly somewhere between about three-fifths and three-fourths of the tire's total weight. So hopefully this gives you a slightly better idea of how hard a tire flip event will be next time you have one in a contest. If you like this kind of thing and you have more strongman math questions that you'd like to see answered, please leave me your topic ideas. This one came courtesy of Reddit, so shout out to our strongman. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So if you like the show, there are many ways you can support it. You can talk about it on your own blog or podcast, you can share it on social media with your friends, or you can leave a rating or review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you happen to listen to it. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Or if you really like us, you can support the show directly by going to patreon.com philosophication. Thank you so much for your support.